Glory and honor be unto your Father. Blessed be thy holy name. Thank you for you never change. You never change, O oh God. You deserve all the praise. You are mighty and glorious. Speak to us today and have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said amen. The church said amen. The church said amen. Hallelujah. We are coming to you live from Eagles Dominion House International. And this church is in Nairobi, Kenya. In the CBD. In Sunbeam Shopping Complex, 5th floor. We are opposite Equity Bank or NAT headquarters. And we are along Mfangano Street. There's also a number that you can call down on the screen to conduct us from any part of this world. You can DM, you can WhatsApp, you can call. Yeah, and uh, we shall attend to you. Happy new month. Happy new month. Happy new month. Are you ready? Are you ready? Resilience. We are still introducing that topic resilience that's what we shall be studying this month of April resilience are you there are we good resilience now the term resilience as its Latin root so it is a word that was adopted into Oxford Dictionary some years back. But the literal definition of the word resilient, it means to bounce back. It means to bounce back. The word is associated, the word resilience is associated with withstanding shock. You see that? Withstanding shock. Returning to form. Maintaining strength. And not giving up. I love this one because you'll be able to understand when it says with the standing shock. Because doing God's work and assignments, you have to withstand shocks. When they were building cars, there's something called shock absorbers. Because on the road, there will be shocks that need to be absorbed. So resilience is associated with withstanding shock, returning to form after you are hit by a storm, maintaining strength and not giving up. Resilience is the ability to press on. Resilience is the ability to press on, overcome hardship and temptation, and persevere in the face of trials. If I can repeat myself, resilience is the ability to press on. It is the ability to press on. It is the ability to overcome hardship. It is the ability to overcome temptation. It is the ability to persevere. And it is the ability to overcome or to face, I mean, to, to overcome in the face of trials. In the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Are we together? Are we good? Are you following? Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. The Bible says, Rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. 
patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer. A man that is resilient will always rejoice in hope. A man that is resilient will always be patient in tribulation. And a man that is resilient will always be constant in prayer. Please, those three things mark them. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and constant in prayer. Why am I talking about hope? Because if you have to be resilient, then you have to be hopeful. You can never separate resilience and hope. Am I talking to you? Oh my goodness. Can you hear me? Am I too hard? I, I, I'm, I'm trying to make it simpler today. And I'm not in a hurry. I want you to understand. If, if you miss something, lift up your hand. It's a lecture. It's a teaching. And the teaching grace is available. So a man that is resilient rejoices in hope. But I want you to understand what is hope. Hope is the confident expectation of what God promised. Hmm. Confident expectation of what God said. Resilience. Are you seeing it? Are you seeing resilience in hope? Confident. Not just expectation. When we say hope is expectation, it's not very enough. It's not, you know, it's not quite enough. The best way is to say confident expectation of the promise of God. And the strength of hope is this. Look at this. The strength of hope is in the knowing that God is a faithful God. There's a teaching we did about the promises of God. And we said that the promises of God, they are yes and amen. They are not yes and no. So where hope comes in, or when we talk about hope, we are talking about a God who is a promise keeper. We are talking about God when he makes a promise, he does not change his mind. So the, are we good so far? Oh, did you get what I said? The strength of hope is in the faithfulness of God. When you know that God is faithful, when you are so sure about this God, but what he says must come to pass, what he promised, he must do it, then hope becomes a confident expectation of the promise of God. You're so confident. You're so sure. You're so sure. You're so sure. Hallelujah. The confident expectation of the promise of God and its strength is in the faithfulness of him that promised even God Almighty. Are you there? So a man that is resilient will always rejoice in hope. So this hoping, you are not hoping in murmuring. Your hope is a rejoicing hope. You know there is a murmuring hope and there is a rejoicing hope. There are people that will wait while they are murmuring. But there are others that will rejoice in hope. A rejoicing hope is a different thing. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Rejoicing hope. You are not waiting on God to do what he promised while you're murmuring and complaining. Mm -mm, you are rejoicing. When the devil comes and whispers to you eh, and tells you God has taken too long, you know, and he begins to tell you, compare yourself. Look at your classmates. And the devil is a bad devil. He will take you around and show you one of the houses that one of your classmates has, <laughs> one of your mates has built, 
And you, you are still holding on to the promise of God. He will take you to a pastor that began just the other day. And they are making it. And you, you, you are you here? <laughs> if they sit you down and tell, tell you, tell us, this God that you've been trusting, how far? How far? If the eyes are too many, tears will come out. <laughs> At least two eyes, you can face them. <laughs> but if they, they sit you down, many of them, and, and you count the number of eyes, one, two, three, four, and you miss the... Uh -huh. Are you here? A rejoicing hope. Tell somebody, a rejoicing hope. Tell somebody, a rejoicing hope. So, a man that is resilient will always rejoice in hope. Hallelujah. So it is a confident expectation and in rejoicing. You're not making noise to us. Telling us how God has been Vila Mungwa Mechelewa. A resilient person does not look back. A resilient person does not look back. No matter the adversity you face. The situation could be harsh. The environment may not be conducive. <laughs> but a resilient person will never look back. Even when the environment is not conducive. Actually, the environment will never be conducive. Can I talk to somebody? God will never take you and build your resilience in a comfortable environment. Who does that? Oh, you're quiet. Okay. He will take you where they talk about you from morning till evening. <laughs> where you are the topic in their phones, in the social media, on TikTok, Mm. A resilient person does not turn back. He doesn't look back. Not. You are either fragile or resilient. Can I repeat that? In this life, you are either fragile or resilient. In other words, you are either easily broken, fragile, or not easily broken. Resilient. In life, you will meet those two characters, the fragile ones. Huh? The fragile ones, when you rebuke them, they leave the assignment. And the resilient ones, that even when you abuse them, they still, still, they remain there. <laughs> they don't move. Yeah. So which part are you? Which one are you? Hello? Hello? Hallelujah? Hey! Can you be resilient? I will still talk about these guys, but let me give you a glimpse. Let me talk about Job in a second. Even the wife looks at him eyeball to eyeball and tells him, cast this your God. And die now. You are of no use. But the guy is resilient. <laughs> He's not giving up. The guy is not giving up anytime soon. He is so resilient. He is so resilient in the face of adversity that he is not giving up. He is not giving in. He is not insuring God. He is not cursing God. He is not ready to look back. He is not ready, not ready to give up on God. He is so focused. I spoke about focus. Because when you talk about resilience and focus. Uh -huh. Jesus said in Luke chapter 9 verse 62. Luke chapter 9 Luke 9, 62. Um, maybe I can read that one. But I want the TLB version. TLB version. 
So let me read with TLB version. Anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. Now you need to, to hear the choice of words. These are the words of Jesus himself. Okay, not another prophet. At least we would have said, uh, God didn't really say that. <laughs> eh? God didn't really mean that. But God himself spoke those words. Anyone who lets himself be distracted from the work I plan for him is not fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, he is not resilient. If you allow yourself to be distracted. So resilience is when you are not easily distracted. Hello? Resilient people never allow themselves to be distracted. Notice that Jesus said anyone who lets himself Hi, Jesus Christ. Anyone who lets himself, you have to let yourself. You have to allow yourself to be distracted. But you can say no to destruction. And you can choose to be resilient. May you choose not to be distracted from today. Oh, come on. No matter, no matter what people say about you, can you choose Jesus, anyone who lets himself be distracted? Now, those are not my words. They are not the words of prophet Isaiah. They are not the words of prophet Jeremiah. They are the words of the Lord himself. Anyone who lets himself be distracted, he's not fit for the kingdom. If you let yourself destruct, be distracted from the work that the Lord plans for you, mm, you are not fit. You carry no greatness. <laughs> Bible says we are not of them that look back. We are resilient. We are not of them that look back. Ay. Resilient people don't look back. No matter what. The moment, look at this. Watch this one. The moment what God says means something to you then what people say about you will mean nothing. <laughs> the moment what God tells you, the moment what God has spoken to you means a lot to you, then what men say about you is nothing to you. I'm talking about not looking back. What your friends say about you will be not. Have you had people say that I was in that commission, I was in that church, but you know what? They were just talking about me. I left that place because they were fighting me. Oh, what about what God said? It means you took the words of God, threw them away. You took the words of people, what they said about you, and you walked out with them. And what you have is what people, are you here? What you have today, the testimony you have is not the promises of God. It's not the words of God. It's not when God came and encouraged you. No, it's what people said. So you put weight on the words of men. And the words that God spoke to you mean nothing to you. Oh, resilient people. Come and backbite them behind their back here. Not far away, one kilometer away. Just here. They will still stay. Resilient. Hey! Resilient. Hannah was resilient. Hannah! Her co-wife was married. And the co-wife was giving birth. Twa twa. Are you here? Yes. If it was you, 
I'm going to. I better stay with my father. Are you here? Eh? Eh? Goroi no yakwa. I love that statement. My heart. I have to protect my heart. What's so special with your heart? When you don't do God's will. You know, I have to protect my heart. Hmm? You are so fragile. You are either fragile or resilient. Believe you me. <laughs> yeah. we, 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 you, you, just, you, you just want pity party. That's what you want. That's, what, that's the messages you love. When the preacher comes in a way, you say, um, he was talking about me. You are not resilient. You are not yet there. Hello? Hi. Am I too hard today? I want to make it simple to you, for you to understand resilience. Because I don't want to be so hard that you will not understand from the beginning. If you, under, if you get it from the beginning, then the word resilience will make sense to you. That statement will make sense to you. The moment what God says means something to you, then what people say about you will mean nothing. You will stay in the commission. You will stay in the vision. You will stay. Hey, you will focus. You will not be distracted because the words of people distract people. Oh. Noah. Hey, look at Noah. I'm just putting foundation. Look at Noah. 120 years. A preacher of righteousness. They've not seen rains. And the guy is so resilient. Uh, how do you think it was for Noah? The ministry of Noah. That man. When we reach heaven. I would want to greet him. And spend some time with him. Hi, hi, hi. Are you here? My goodness. Are you here? Noah. 120 years. A preacher of righteousness. The man is preaching. He's telling people there's going to be floods. You say, you say, you say what? Floods. Hey. But the guy did not give up because people never believed in him. When people don't believe in you, <laughs> are you the kind of people that when you begin to preach, you want people to sit down and listen to you? When they don't listen to you, you are giving up. You, you don't want to do anything with God again. You're giving up. God, this thing you gave me is not making sense. Nobody's receiving me. God sent you to a city. If God sent you to that city and they never received you, stay there. Somebody will receive you. There are people that God has sent for you. Hello? Be resilient. Be resilient. Don't be a Christian like, hey, sorry, you. Let's pray for sister so and so. She's so broken. See? Huh? You sent a SMS to fellowship. I'm so down. You are always down. Ah, always down. When will you be up now? You know what I went through? What you went through is in the past. Let go of the past. Why can't you let go? You know what I went through in that marriage? I don't think I can handle another marriage. That's your problem. God is saying, let go of the past. Say, Pastor, today you are so harsh. Hmm. It's because I'm teaching on resilience. Come to me when I'm teaching about love. You will like it. <laughs> but when I'm teaching on resilience, you will not like me at first. Makaboli and Asebala. Hey. Hi, I love you, Jesus. One enemy of resilience is the incorrect assumption that we know how things will end. That's one enemy of resilience. The incorre in incorrect, not correct, incorrect assumption that we know how things will end. When a situation seems out of control, when a situation seems out of your control or does not appear to be headed in the right direction, we tend to write the end over the story. 
has one enemy of resilience incorrect assumption because things don't look like they're going they're working ah, they're not working so you just conclude it's over even if God said about it God spoke about it wait 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 God is not your grandfather God is not your grandma your grandma can promise you that parcel of land and on the way sell it because of tribulation God is not your grandfather when he says it, no matter how long it takes, he will do it. My goodness. That assumption of men, that the way things are headed, I don't think it's going to be well. I think this thing is... And then you assume incorrect assumption. When a situation seems out of control or does not appear to be headed in the right direction, we tend to write the end over that story. And you stop being resilient. You forget about what God said. And flow with the happening. The moment you begin to flow with the happening. And forget what God said. Resilience. We think. We think we know the final result. So. Instead of exercising resilience. We give up or take matters into our own hands. Let me repeat again. We think we know the final result. We think we know. Eh, I don't think this brother is Kizana. So you think you know the final result. We think we know the final result. So instead of exercising resilience, we give up or take matters into our own hands in the book of Isaiah very important as I, as I wind up the Lord spoke to me on this scripture Isaiah chapter 40 Verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Have you not known? Hmm. When you think things are not headed the right way. Huh? When you think uh, um, it's the end of this story. God is not coming through. When you think that, remember Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Can I repeat again? Have you not known, have you not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary he doesn't get tired mm -hmm. his understanding is unsearchable this one is a good passage to cling to whenever we can see only disaster ahead and I want to insist on that point when you don't see anything can I talk to somebody God spoke to David in Ziklag and tells him go I'm giving you victory overtake recover her you remember that story but the Bible says he began he woke up in the twilight twilight is when you can't see well you can't see well. Oh my goodness, are you here? When you can't see well, <laughs> when you are not sure about victory in that situation, as long as God said about it, hey, you stay, be resilient. This is a passage to remind you. Are you with me? It's a passage to cling whenever we can see only disaster. You know, there are times when you see disaster ahead. What I see is disaster. 
what I see ahead of me. Hi. Hi. No, 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 Oh my goodness. God doesn't come and go. What do I mean? God lasts. I lost somebody. God doesn't come and go. God lasts. It is you who is assuming he is no longer there in the situation. He is no longer there in the fire. God lasts. He does not come and go. Come, go. God doesn't get tired. God doesn't get tired. <laughs> God does not pause to catch his breath. It's not God. Huh? He does not pause to catch his breath. Hey, that situation. Oh. Hey. That's not God. That's you. God does not pause to catch his breath. Before you make an incorrect assumption on that situation, I'm teaching on resilience. He does not pause to catch his breath. He never gets weary or tired. He never. He never gets tired. He never gets tired. He is resilient. Our God is resilient. And that's why he is teaching us about resilience. He does not come and go. He lasts. He's always there. What do I mean? He said, I will always be with you. To the end of the age, he has never left. If he began with us, the good work he began, he is faithful. I say the God that began the good work, he is faithful to accomplish it. Become resilient because your God, your Father is resilient. Be standing in the presence of God. Be standing. You are either fragile or resilient. You are either fragile or resilient. Kumbalia Sabaya. Lift up your hands and open your mouth and begin to tell the Lord this one. You are resilient. And because I am your child, ah, I carry your DNA. I have your DNA. Ragana Masede. I will no longer be fragile again. I will not be fragile. I refuse. Tell him. I refuse to be fragile. I will be resilient. I will be resilient. Resilience is your portion. You will not be distracted by any wind that comes your way. You will not be distracted by what men say. You will not be distracted by the words of people. You will not allow yourself to be distracted. You will be resilient. 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 Ah! Resilience is your portion. Resilience Resilience is your portion. You will not look back. You will not turn back. You will not turn back. You will not give up. You will be resilient. Ah, you will be resilient. You will be resilient. The words of men will mean nothing to you. But the words of God that he has spoken over your life, the prophecy and the promise of God, 
it will mean something to you and you will cling on to what God said and not one man say men that are resilient don't give a damn what people say they are resilient they are focused what did God say what did God say the environment around you may not look promising the happenings around you may not look good by the way the environment the happenings are not meant to encourage you they are not meant to look good the devil is there fighting to show you that this God is not coming through for you but I want to tell somebody focus have a rejoicing hope in God he is not a man to lie if he said it he will surely come to pass he will do it 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 resilience you need resilience in doing God's assignments if God has given you an assignment if the Lord has assigned you any work any job to do for him then resilience you need it resilience 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 resilience
the happenings do not dictate God. Resilience is what you need. Thank you, Father. If you are not born again, why don't you give your life to Jesus now? Why don't you surrender to Jesus? Tell him, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that the Father raised you from the dead. I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name. If you made that prayer, you are saved. You are born again. The old is gone. The past is gone. The past is behind you. Behold, you are a new creation. And your name is in the book of life. Your name is in the book of life. Do yourself a favor. Don't you stay at home. Look for a Bible-believing church. Where they reveal Christ. There is a true servant of God around where you are. Yes, there is always a true servant in every locality. God told Elijah, I have 7,000 that have not bowed down to Baal. I know there are, there are those that you know, but there are others you don't know that God has preserved for his heritage. Listen to me carefully. Don't stay at home. If you happen to be in Nairobi, this is a place, a good place to be, a good church to join. We are Eagles Dominion House International here in the heart of Nairobi, in Nairobi CBD. In Sunbeam Shopping Complex, you come up to 5th floor. Sunbeam is opposite Equity Bank or Nat headquarters. And we are along Fangano Street. There's also a number that you can call. Even in prayers, directions, you know, teaching, there's a number down on the screen. Call that number. I'll speak direct to you. I will answer your call. God bless you. God favor you. I love you. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.